Namaste and welcome to Dragonfly Cookery and Knives. In this video I'm going to be doing a, demo, a further demonstration of a collaborated effort that Work Tough Gears with Victor Lin and myself did with the Sada Cookery. Um, I had promised in the last video that I was going to do another uh, more in-depth video of the use of Sada showing her capabilities. Unfortunately, we're uh, we're in the new year now, which is a good thing, but unfortunate for us that we're still suffering from the pandemic from last year, which has caused us uh, here in Southern California to have a lot of businesses still closed down and not uh, open for business, such as uh, places where you get your hair cut, you know, hair salons, uh, restaurants, parks, and campsites. So I haven't really been able to go up and and uh, set up a camp and actually use the cooker around the campsite to show its uh, real function in that cap capacity. But uh, we did have some high winds the other day that did knock down some of the uh, branches from the beautiful pine trees that surround our property. So I'm going to take a, an opportunity to do what I would normally be doing, and that is uh, cleaning up the yard a, a bit, taking some of these branches and, and, and uh, chopping them down for the trash can or to add to my wood pile. So, I do have a branch up here. I do have uh, some male dogs that like to mark their territory and, and, uh, and kind of put their brand on anything new that's in, in the area. So, uh, I put it up on the wall so that way that I can have some uh, nice branches to, to demonstrate here uh, with. I'm also going to show some a uh, little bit closer up detail work. I have some pencils out here. I'm actually going to show you and demonstrate that... Uh, that using Sada, you can actually have great dexterity and control over the blade to where you could do the functions that you would do with an EDC knife, you could do with, uh, with this cookery in hand, like sharpening a pencil. Uh, if you can sharpen a pencil, you can definitely make feather sticks, notches, any fine detail, carving work that you would normally use an uh, EDC knife or a smaller knife for. That doesn't mean that the smaller knife isn't going to be the better tool for it. It just goes and shows in demonstration here that with a large, well-balanced, well-made cookery, you can do uh, the large detail or large task work that you would need in a campsite or a hunting site, as well as some of the finer detail stuff that you might need for um, that you would normally use an EDC knife, but if you didn't have it in hand, you could definitely use the cooker for it. So with that, I'm going to show you also uh, Sada here with, uh, with a little bit of some modification that I've done. What's nice about you having a Kydex sheet is that you can do attachments to it. You can add modification for it very easy. You can customize it, which is what I've done here. I've included on this particular sheath a kind of following suit with my uh, kind of my uh, uh, pet program or pet project last year was uh, creating some EDC style uh, knives and, and, and uh, packaging them with uh, the cookeries that, that I designed um, and do a companion set series. So following that, that theme, I've done that here by taking one of uh, Work Top Gear's other knives that they produce, which is a beautiful EDC knife. It's the little, um, uh, it's the Tayal, the Mini Tayal, which is a really great, useful uh, little EDC style knife, great to carry with you for everyday carry, but it's also an excellent camp tool and uh, a hunter's uh, knife. Has a really great curve on it, which makes it an excellent skinner. Um, I've taken it out and used it at barbecue and uh, and uh, sliced some meat with it to put on the barbecue. And I've also sliced up and cut up some vegetables, which uh, you would use this for uh, that purpose at a campsite. So it does an excellent, excellent job. This particular knife would even be good for filleting a fish. So it's a it's a really good, useful little knife, but. The review is not about that. It's just to show that in this particular case, um, I've taken, uh, I've detached the um, the carry system on it, and put that aside, and got out some bolts and screws and, and uh, attached it to my 
um, to my scabbard. Now I do have my um, my ferro rod here, uh, so this is kind of a, a, a set that's all set up and ready to go. If I need to grab this and run out the door, I would have a uh, a system that I could survive with with my fire starting, my small EDC knife, and a large cooker. So it's already set up. I will be getting a, uh, um, a ferro rod sleeve that I can attach here and I'm probably going to put it right here, that's a perfect spot for it, and put it there so it's not banging around and hanging off my scabbard like it is right now. But this go just goes to show that you can attach these things and uh, you have a nice little uh, kit that you can carry out in the field uh, or grab it in an emergency situation. So, uh, with that being said, here's the Sada, same one that I tested in the first uh, impression test video. Uh, in this particular case, we're going to be doing it to do some yard work. I will be using some work gloves, and uh, I'm going to make a little comment about work gloves. Um, most people around their yard, they're going to get gardening gloves, which is what I have here. These ones happen to have, uh, you know, some... Uh, like a corduroy or a canvas along with leather. Now, they're, they work great for around the yard and stuff, but they don't give you a lot of dexterity and they don't fit real close to you and they don't have a lot of uh, traction ability and, and gripping ability that you could have with some of the more finer and better made, better quality gloves that you could have purchased and acquire for carrying out on the field um, that the military might use. Some of them even have it where there's you know, your fingers are still exposed, uh, but it allows you to have some good grip. Um, they're always excellent and great for, for doing this type of work to keep your hands safe. I'm going to be using one of my gloves to hold branch with, and I'm going to keep my other hand uh, without the glove on it that I'm actually going to be holding the, the cookery with. Me personally, I prefer not to use gloves when I'm using my cookery or big knives or even my smaller knives. And that is because I like the feel of how that, that knife is in my hand. Um, I want the feel of, and the ability to have good dexterity with it. I want good control. Um, if the, the knife is well made and well designed, the handle has been designed as well as the blade, that means and that translates into a handle that's not going to create hot spots. It's not going to injure my hand. So. If it does injure my hand, then I know that that knife wasn't well designed and it's probably not a knife I'm going to continue to use on a regular basis. So uh, the ones that feel the most comfortable are the ones I'm going to pick up and use every time. So in that, with that all being said, I'm going to be doing that with, with uh, Sada as I continue on with this test. Uh, right now I'm going to set her down for a minute, get my branch, and start getting to work. Now this is a, a typical pine, uh, I don't know if it's a Douglas fir or what it is, um, not real up on the names of certain trees as I probably should be, but uh, this is a typical pine tree that you will find in Southern California. And so, uh, you know, if I'm out camping, I'd be running across this type of wood as the most common to be using in my fire or to build shelters or traps or whatever I might be uh, needing to, to do. So with that being said, let's uh, delimb this a bit and, uh, and get some of these smaller branches off and, uh, and I'll be talking as I'm doing this, uh, just not just to bore you guys with needless conversation, but to also describe what I'm experiencing, what I'm feeling and some other additional thoughts that I might have as I'm doing this that might be beneficial in understanding this cookery or the process in which I'm using it for. Now as you can see, um, the main part of the blade that you use with the cookery is right here. This is your sweet spot for chopping. However, for your detailed work, the inner part, inner curve, is really good. Uh, Sada has a really good substantial tip on it, so it is good for stabbing or piercing an object with. Um, which is also very good and very useful. Now as you can see when I get up closer all I have to do is just go with inner curve here and I can delimb closer to myself without endangering myself uh, with injury. I'm going to go ahead, I've delimbed part of this uh, 
this tree already. Let me uh, take that one limb off and perhaps this pine cone. There we go. So now I got a little bit better space. So this is about um, an inch and a half maybe in thickness. Maybe an inch. It's not like a really thick piece of wood. And uh, we'll go ahead and chop into her and see what, what we do here. Now in choking back, it gives me a, little, a lot more leverage to use the physics of the blade to do my chopping. If I want to choke up closer, I have better control of the blade, but less... Uh, now I'm diminishing the physics of the blade somewhat in its ability to chop. So the further back I go back, the more I can. And the way I'm doing it right now is I have my pinky around the, the bird beak pommel and allowing the blade to do the cutting. Um, I have a really bad shoulder, <laughs> so uh, taking real heavy swings and stuff, it, it doesn't work so well for me. Another reason why I like cook grease is because there's physics involved in this that are more ergonomic to my physical limitations. It allows me to, to uh, allow the tool to do more of the work than it would be my body. And uh, that helps me a great deal because of the injury to my shoulder that I've sustained. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and um, move that out of the way and do some light chopping. Let's say I wanted to make a steak or a little uh, a little spear point. I can do that, and I'm going to do that with this right now just to kind of show you and re-demonstrate what I did in the first video of showing how she chops. And I'll tell you, she really bites in. So it's a, it's a very sharp blade. I did do a little bit of reprofiling of the edge. It's, it has a great convex edge, so I just retouched it up and sharpened it to the sharpness that I like. I like my my uh, my blade profile edge to be shaving sharp. So I could take hair off of my arm, I can cut through paper really well, I can do some nice detail stuff. That's just my preference. It's not everybody's preference. And for a blade that you're going to use like an axe, it doesn't require that type of a sharpness edge. But here I was able to put a nice point. I'll come up and show you here. Hopefully I stay in camera that you've got smooth edges here. So it is it is cutting the wood. It is not chopping or smashing wood. Smashing would be the better word. I'm, I apologize. Um, it is slicing, cutting this wood. It's leaving a nice polished uh, surface, which lets you know that it, it actually is cutting. So very, very sharp, um, and, it, and it's very, very useful. Um, going back on the, the handle, getting extended leverage is very good, very useful. And allows you to get a really good chop going. Um, choking it up gives you great detail, especially when you come up to this um, this finger notch right here. Allows you to lock in and have great control for carving, which I'm going to demonstrate with the pencils now. So. <clears throat> I'm going to take a, a work glove off because <clears throat> I no longer need it. I'm not holding anything that's going to poke me. I will try to be conscious and stay in the frame of this uh, camera and hopefully be able to get the camera to focus on this somewhat to where you can see. Now this pencil has obviously been pen uh, sharpened in a pencil sharpener. So it's round all the way around. has a nice little point on it. It's ready to go, ready to use. However, uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to take it uh, a bit further and show you that uh, as an artist I would be sharpening my pencil out in the field and uh, I would be using in probably the knife I have on hand to do it. Now if this is the cookery I have on hand then this is what I would be using. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit about pencil uh, <laughs> design and, and how they're made uh, to kind of help you understand why, why this lead doesn't slide in and out of your wood and also why it doesn't move around on you uh, when you're sharpening it. And the reason is because this wood has been hollowed out for this lead to be inserted into it. But it also has a little bit of wax on the, 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 uh, 
on it that allows it to stick to the wood and hold that lead in place so you can sharpen it. Well, when you're doing hand sharpening like I'm doing, if I was using an X-Acto blade to remove this wood around where the, and to expose the graphite, which is the pencil lead, then I uh, will have to shave down and actually meet with that wax, and I feel it. And you'll feel the resistance. As you can see when I'm uh, cutting, that it's, it might hang a little bit, and when it does, it's when it's encountering that wax uh, with that wood. And so you take a very light touch, and you, you let the, the sharpness of the blade do the cutting for you. And uh, But one thing I'm doing is I'm pulling the wood towards me, or the pencil towards me. I'm also moving the cookery in this way. I'm using this area. I have my finger at the finger notch and behind the finger guard of my handle locked in with my other fingers. Thumb on the spine with my other uh, thumb on the spine. No, more as a guide, not as a push, although I am doing a little bit of uh, light pushing as well. This allows me to have good feeling of what it is I'm doing. I have great control. I can speed up or slow down when I need to, add pressure when I need to, and take that pressure off when I need to. So it allows me some great sensitivity at, to what I am doing and what I'm ca carving here uh, using Sada and this uh, the recurve part of this blade uh, where it's really sharp. It's allowing me great, great control. I can do this with a feather touch, allowing just the sharpness of the blade to do the work for me. Now I can lightly go over the graphite to kind of smooth it out a little bit, take some some gouges out, and uh, but this is this is the area when you're when you're cutting into the, the graphite, whether you're using exacto blade or sada, you can hang on that and then break the lead very easily because that lead is very brittle and very fragile. Um, but here, as you can see, let me see if I can get out of the way here. Um, and it's not focusing very well. It's trying to focus on the background. I apologize about that. But here it is, the lead. You can see how ba far back I have sharpened it. And could I do feather sticks with this? Of course I could do feather sticks sticks with Sada here. And I'll kind of slight, lightly demonstrate it with the pencil here. As you can see, some light feathers coming up, curls. And uh, again, allowing that control... I can determine how uh, how deep I go, how hard, you know. If if this was the only piece of dry wood that I had to start a fire with, I could use my pencil and uh, be able to create um, a feather stick with it, as you can see. Oh, sorry, camera doesn't want to focus on that very well. Hopefully, it comes in a little bit better. Not great feathers, but enough to where I'm with using my fire rod, I could probably get a little bit of a fire going on there along with some other um, fire material and get a fire going if I had to, if this is the only dry piece of wood I had. But um, this also demonstrates and shows how much control I have over this knife and the ability to, um, to slice into this wood without breaking my pencil and... Uh, and having great control, great ability to use this knife for a variety of different tasks um, for detail work. That's really important. The balance of this cookery is right where it needs to be to make this very, very useful, very controllable, um, and, and why I like a really well-balanced cookery. There are some cookeries that are spine-heavy, which is okay because they're designed that way to be excellent choppers. This is this is uh, more what I would call an everyday, all-around workhorse cookery that's designed for heavy chopping, but also can be used for detailed work, like what I'm have hopefully demonstrated here in this video today. Well, with that, I'm going to take a few more little passes at this and uh, show you the end result of what Sada is able to do in uh, trimming and sharpening this pencil. 
This is a, uh, I'm very, very pleased with what Work Tough Gear produced in manufacturing this cookery design, which I designed. They did a fantastic job. Thank you very much for watching. I hope this interests you. I hope this, this did demonstrate uh, the abilities and, and capability of this uh, cookery. If you like it, please like and subscribe on my YouTube channel. Leave any comments there. Also, my Facebook page at Blue Dragonfly Trading Post. You can leave comments and questions there, and I will answer them. Uh, this will be added to my website. It hasn't been yet. Uh, like I said, you know, we're still in this pandemic problem, and uh, having had COVID myself, I lost some time and pay at work, and so I've been trying to catch up on that. I'm going to try to get some of these, enough stock to where you can purchase them. You don't have to wait for them, and I can get them out to you as quickly as possible. However, they are available right now at uh, Tough Gear's website. Uh, there's free shipping and uh, no sales tax. Uh, they're out of the country. Uh, they are being sold for $225, and in my opinion, they're an excellent value for that. Uh, the spine of this is also sharp to where you could um, you could scrape and you could uh, um, be able to get some fuzz going. You could also debark with it and you can also uh, throw sparks with a fire rod uh, with it. As you can see, I've removed the, pa the paint off the, the back of this and exposed the wood and got some of the little fuzzes there just demonstrating with the the uh, sharpness of that spine. So, excellent, excellent all around tool. Great package to add to your kit. And uh, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, namaste. God bless. Stay safe and healthy. Bye bye.